Good afternoon, comic book fans. I thought uh, I would give you a look at the new artist edition I got, the Marvel Covers Artist Edition. Um, it's really nice. It covers a whole bunch of Marvel Comics covers from the 70s and the 80s to give you a little scale. That's a regular old comic book. That's my reprint of Giant Size X-Men number one from 1983. I don't know how many of you... I don't actually have a copy of Giant Size X-Men number one, but I've got a reprint of it from 1983. That was good enough for me in 1983, so I never tracked down and spent the money on an actual copy, because, hey, there were plenty of other comics to buy. So... This opens up. into all of the thanks and whatevers. Some nice pictures and design, and this is all the credits of who we get. Arthur Adams, Frank Brunner, Rich Buckler, John Buscema, John Byrne, Dave Cockrum, Gene Colan, Alan Davis, Ron Friends, Michael Golden, Gil Kane, Jack Kirby, Mike Mignola, Frank Miller, Kevin Nolan, George Perez, Mike Plug, Sandy Blunkett, John Romita Sr., John Romita Jr., P. Craig Russell, Bill Sienkiewicz, Walter Simonson, Barry Windsor-Smith, Jim Starlin, Jim Steranko, Herb Trimpey, George Tuska, Bernie Wrightson, and Mike Zack. And a fold-out of Mike Zack and one of Arthur Adams. But you can see here, it's uh, predominantly, we got a lot of Arthur Adams, a lot of John Byrne, a lot of Gil Kane, a lot of Frank Miller, a lot of John Romita Sr. So, there's also, and it's in alphabetical order, so Art Adams starts it. No Neil Adams, though. Some really nice covers without their logos here. I've never had a lot of Art Adams work, but I like it. And so there's some of these, uh, let's see, this is Art Adams inked by Craig Russell, who I'm a big Craig Russell fan, so I appreciate that. And I think we have other Arthur Adams inked by Terry Austin. That's really nice. Look at that nice fluffy hair. Whoops, there we go. Nice fluffy hair on, uh, Kazar. And I think this is some earlier Art Adams inked by Art Adams. A classic Frank Brunner page right there. Cover. See the Zipatone. More Zipatone on the John Buscema stuff. Look at that. Nice uh, bullseye Zipatone. Uh, this is a really, really uh, pretty amazing book. Up, oh, John Byrne stuff. Hey, more Zipatone. Back in the day, this is what you did before computers. If you wanted some gray on it, you put down this paper that has a pattern of dots called Zipatone. He's got some up here, too. But really, this is uh, Joe Rubenstein inking John Byrne on these cap ones. Really nice stuff. John Byrne inking himself. On Fantastic Four. Awesome classic X-Men covers here. These ones are quite nice. Burn in Austin. Some Death of Phoenix classic cover. I'll have to show you this little thing in the She's Dead Jim. <laughs> A little uh, bones there. McCoy. The Doc from Star Trek. More uh, X-Men 139, X-Men 140, Wendigo. All sorts of stuff. No, that is a weird looking cover. Now we're into the Dave Cockrum stuff. Nice. Nice Cockrum and Terry Austin Deathbird cover. He did some nice X-Men covers, too. Oh, yeah. I always like the... It's funny. I always... I, when I think of this figure, I always think it's John Byrne, but it's not. It's uh, Dave Cockrum with Terry Austin inks, making it look a bit like uh, Byrne and uh, Austin. So, Because all the other figures are pure Dave Cockrum, but for some reason, that one right there reminds me of Byrne. Classic arcade. Lots of... See, the, see, how, see how brown... Those uh, word balloons are. 
that's because I'm guessing they were pasted. Oh, they're definitely pasted down. Because you can see on those uh, tails. Let me see, where are they here? On those tails, the lightning bolt tails, there's brown tape around them. So those, uh, those um, balloons weren't lettered right on the board. They were pasted down afterwards with rubber cement. And the rubber cement is turning the uh, whole cover. Oh, yeah, all this was pasted down. So the... See the remnants of rubber cement up here. Let's see what we got after. Ah, this one is uh, some nice Gene Colan. I really like this. Uh, this is Gene Colan and Bill Everett. Um, and Bill Everett's ink line is just fan. He's just got these little tiny feathering things, which are whew, amazing. Some more Gene Colan. Yeah, there's a double page John Romita. Ah, uh, here's something I find interesting too. Uh, George Russos was the in-house Marvel colorist, color coverist for, I don't know, all through the 70s and 80s and into the 90s. And here... Right down here, you can see in Klaus Janssen ink, there's two of them with Klaus Janssen inks in it, where right down here, you can see a little note. Whoops, it's hard to show. Right down here is a little note that says, George, people I think should be colored normally with highlights, Klaus. So you get to see a little bit of the process there. Whoops, it's a big book. I'm knocking the camera tripod around. So you get to see a little bit of the process. You get to see, little, see another note over here, George. This should be sunset. Suggest YR3, Y streaks on bottom, YB2 casting through spot. So Klaus Jansen, who's an inker and also a colorist, was giving George Russos, the uh, in-house colorist, some notes on how he thought the uh, cover should be colored. So that's interesting stuff to see. Completely chaotic Michael Golden cover. Some of Michael Golden's the nom. And you see these red line here, red lines here. There, um, when you saw seen artist draw something in red line, that means it's got to be a color hold. That right there is going to be printed all in color, and then they remove the line, so there's no black line or anything in there. Oh, known to Gil Kane. And this is interesting too. This was the period where there was a border pasted down, but the border's gone. Remember when Marvel had all their covers in a box in the early '70s? Uh, to celebrate, I think it was the Fantastic Four 10th anniversary. Um, but the box isn't here. He's over, I mean, I guess they put the box in, or the box fell off or something. Because here's another one that was in a box. You can see there used to be something there that was pasted down. Now we only have the brown rubber cement. More John Ramita. Up now we're into Gil Kane. There's the Gil Kane, uh cover from Giant Size X-Men number one that's so famous. I always liked this cover, Gil Kane. Uh, and here we also have, let me see if I can show this, a fold out. One side is Mike Zek's Captain America. And the other side is that well-known uh, Art Adams and Terry Austin Wolverine. So that's pretty neat to see. And these are all at the size of the original art. I never knew. Here's some more Gil Kane. You can tell by the... <laughs> tell. I forget who we... I think this is Tom Palmer inking Gil Kane, if I remember right. But you can tell it's Gil Kane by that nose. The upshot at Gil Kane. Uh, here we go with some Kirby. I always love Kirby. Devil Dinosaur. Captain America. Fantastic Four, Invaders, Marvelous. It gave us lots of Kirby. Early Mike Mignola. Hardly looks like Mike Mignola yet. And Larry Mondello on the inks. I'm not sure who that is. But he, there's that one. Mike Mignola and Kevin Nolan. There's an interesting combination. You get a lot of the graphicness of Mike Mignola with some of the illustrativeness of Kevin Nolan on inks. That one's looking more like the Mike Mignola we know now. Nice stuff. Ha ha. Now we're into the Frank Miller stuff. 
excellent. Beware the Hulk. Whoops. Watch, beware the tripod. Classic Frank Miller, uh, classic Electra cover. Oops, what do we got here? Are we skipping a page? There we go. More Frank Miller Daredevil. Lots of Frank Miller. Oh, this one was done in duo. You can see it was done in duo. All this brown is duotone. There was a chemical that you'd brush on like it was ink, except it was clear, and it would bring up one of two tones, either the dark gray or the light gray. You can see over here it says, double tone number 214, two invisible shades, light and dark. So this is a different paper than it's normally used, so you can get this effect. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Here's another note from Klaus to George. I suggest very dark background with headlights on, highlights on the gun gun barrel the underside so interesting more notes from klaus jansen to george russo's i really like this uh frank miller and terry austin cover you don't see those two work together a lot but that that that's an interesting combo and i i like that cover a lot very complex all sorts of things happening in it We all know that uh, Miller and Rubenstein Wolverine number four cover. Oops, Kevin Nolan cover. Dun, dun, dun. I always like this is the one George Perez one that's in there, and it doesn't look a whole lot like George Perez because Joe Sinnott is inking it. You don't often see Joe Sinnott over George Perez. He gives it a real clean look. Um, but I. Uh, uh, I like that one. That one, of course, is nice too. Doctor Strange. Early Ghost Rider cover. Sandy Plunkett and Alan Weiss. There's a combination that gives you a lot of... You, there's only one in here by those two, but they give you a lot of these little fine lines. What do we got here? Oh, this is John Romita. Pardon me. We were in the Gil Kane section before, and I, th I think John Romita was on the inks for some of those. This is the, we're finally here at the John Romita section. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, all sorts of stuff. Classic John Romita cover. Another one, we all know these two, 121 and 122. Oh no, Vision, don't fall into the volcano. Yeah, that's gonna hurt him. <laughs> More John Romita. Not sure who's inking them on all these. I'd have to look it up. John Romita Foom cover. That one's nice. Giant size chillers. More John Romita. Some more. Nice Tower of Shadows piece there. I guess he's inking himself on that one. Only one signature. I don't like any Shanna covers. That's John Romita Jr. Marvel Superhero Contest. Another John Romita Jr. Who's that one? Was that? That's with Al Williamson, and that's with Bob Layton. Interesting. Al Williamson, of course, is a great artist in his own right, who uh, ended up inking a lot of John Romita's Daredevil stuff and did an excellent, excellent job on it. More J.R. Jr. Craig Russell. I'm a big Craig Russell fan. That. I don't think I've ever seen this uh, Craig Russell cover before, but I really like Craig Russell's opera stuff that he did in the 80s all the way up until now. Bill Sankiewicz, Moon Knight. Walt Simonson, Thor. More Thor. Oh, this is the one I think is... Um, who was that? It was, it was like... Jeez, uh, I think this is uh, Palmer over Steranko, which is a weird... I, when I was flipping through the book the first time, I had a look up. I was like, who is that? That doesn't look quite... Yeah, it's Tom Palmer inking Jim Steranko, I think it was. Or no, inking Barry Windsor Smith. Pardon me, as I flip the page and see Barry Windsor Smith. I'm now remembering. Yeah, I didn't... I was like, that... that who knew Barry Windsor... That isn't very Barry Windsor Smith looking, except in that face a little, you can see. It's very Tom Palmer-ish. I, when I first flipped by it, I had no clue. Now here we're on the Barry Windsor Smith stuff. It seems to be a theme of people hanging. And floating. Excellent, nice stuff here. Into a couple of Starlins. 
Very nice. Warlock. Now we're into Staranko. With Joe Sinnott over him. Once again, looks not a combination I've seen a lot. Looks interesting. There's that classic Hulk cover. How can you not like that? And I think that's the original Staranko Hulk head, not the pasted on one that appeared in the cover. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at that because I don't remember it that well, but I think that's the original head. More Staranko. Some uh, Herb Trimpy. More Herb Trimpy. That's George Tusca. Really nice Bernie Wrights. And just look at the, oof, the blacks and whites. Wow. Really nice rights and Mike Zach, he did some excellent work. Here's a cover I've seen popping up on, on eBay a lot lately. A lot of people buying the original to this one, the Captain America Annual with the Wolverine Captain America cover for Secret Wars. Mike Zach drew that cover. Another Punisher Spider Man one. Shang-Chi one. Mike Zach did a... When I first started buying Shang-Chi in the late 70s, I think it was, Mike Zach was doing a lot of nice covers for it. And there's all their signatures. So there you go. I gotta say, you know, an excellent, excellent book. I really enjoy this one. I'm gonna be studying it closely a bit to see uh, how they do things. And Man, I really love these artist edition books. Hope you enjoyed your look at it. We'll catch you later.